back to my channel. This is Jonathan and Jonathan's Tarot. I just got a Kickstarter um, Tarot deck that I've been waiting for. And as you can tell, I have an audience this time. Um, I was only going to bring out a couple, but they all insisted on being here for this one. So that's a big hint of what I'm doing here today. So let's get started. Um, I kind of cut the tape so I can get it to pin. Ooh. We have here... Oh, I got two by accident. <laughs> so this is the extra moon card that everyone got. I got two. But oh, here's a big hint. This is the Crystal Skull Tarot deck. Thank you so much for helping me bring Crystal Skull Tarot to life. Enclosed are your deck book set, your moon altar card, and a high priestess pin that I've made for you as an extra gift. If you love Crystal Skull Tarot, I hope you'll tell your friends about it. I've printed 500 decks, and those not claimed by backers and pre-orders will be available for purchase on the Etsy shop called Crystal Skull Tarot. There's information on the back of the book which is substantial enough to read cover to cover, thanks to Rachel Pollock, about all the places online where I can be found. I'm so happy to be sending out this project, and I hope you love it. Heart, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. I will definitely be sending out this video. So, uh, this is a Crystal Skull Tarot, a deck by Jesse Disco with book by Rachel Pollock. And, um, Here's the information. Instagram, Crystal Skull Tarot, Etsy, Crystal Skull, Crystal Skull Tarot, and email, Crystal Skull Tarot dot gmail, at gmail, dot gmail. Can you tell I'm excited here? Okay. Oh. And then here is the pin. box out of the way. Crystal Skull Tarot by Jesse Driscoll, book by Rachel Pollock. Crystal Skull Tarot is a 78 card photographic deck that follows the RWS tradition. Skulls can be thought of as containers for consciousness, and crystal skulls are effective conduits for intuition. This beautiful deck comes with a 150-page book written by tarot legend Rachel Pollock. It's in the box. Find at Crystal Skull Tarot on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Just got to get the plastic off of here, and we're going to dive in. No, oh, yeah, the crowd is crammed. Cram up. The crowd is excited. I was trying to say a word that wouldn't come out of my mouth for some reason. Clamoring, that's the word I was trying to say. <laughs> nice box. I love that it you got the holds and it's solid, definitely a solid build here. Let's look at the book first. That is not a little white book, is it? That is quite substantial here. How many pages do we have? 150. Wow. Okay. And it's dense, too, isn't it? Crystal Skull Tarot, first, first edition, first printing. I don't know why I'm stumbling over my words. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde. Rachel's dedication for her help and patience, and most of all, her wise knowledge of the tro. This text is dedicated to Zoe Matoff. Jesse is thrilled to have worked with Rachel on this project, and she is thankful for support from family, husband Dan, mom Nancy, kids Joey, Linus, Rowan, and Jameson, Rachel Pollock, and Zoe Matoff, and their lovely local community of Turo friends. Simon Harrison and friends in the Hermit's Cave community. Yay! 
Uh, Kimberly Tsan for production advice and all of the Kickstarter backers. So there's a statement from Jesse, introduction, readings, major arcana, minor arcana, and then the minor arcana are broken down, court cards, court cards are broken down, that's lovely. Stones and Crystal Skull Tarot, reference, social media shop contact, about Rachel, about Jesse. So let's read this statement from Jesse here. Skulls can be thought of as containers for consciousness, and crystal skulls are effective conduits for intuition. Crystal Skull Tarot came to fruition after years of personal practice with crystals, crystal skulls, and tarot. Skulls were chosen intuitively for each card based on the properties of the stones from which they were carved and how those properties connected to the meanings of the cards. Crystal Skull Tarot is a photographic deck that follows the Rider Waite Smith system, and many of the images are direct homages to the classic RWS Tarot. All photographs were taken in natural window light using a handmade antique tablecloth as a background. This handmade cloth, like minerals that formed in the earth many years ago, is a connection to ancestors and time-honored wisdom. In addition to the minerals, color comes in splashes of both natural colored and hand dyed wool, some in lock form and some hand spun into art yarn. The wool has energy programmed into it, into its very structure, and its presence adds a palpable spark to the images. May this lovingly creative self published deck inspire you in your tarot practice. Introduction, talking about Jesse, talking about Tarot, structure of Tarot, picture of Rachel Pollock using the deck. Oh, this is a meaty little thing, isn't it? Here's a spread with an example, and then we get into the card meanings. Pretty substantial amount of information, and then you have a few keywords at the end there. So, quite a lot. And they even go into what um, what minerals were used in each image here. So, that's quite, I love that there's black and white photos in here. Talking about the miners now. And then you get into the write-ups, which are not as substantial as the majors, but they're still pretty substantial. And then let's see, court cards. Again, you get a pretty nice write-up. And then we have a list of the different stones, some of which are here in front of me. <laughs> Like I said, I wasn't planning on bringing out all my skulls, but they insisted on being here for the full unboxing. So, I guess they wanted to see their famous brothers and sisters. <laughs> so. Let's just look at the backs here. Same backs as the altar card, which the altar card is obviously quite a bit bigger. Here, let's do it this way so you can see the difference. Yeah. And it's it's matte with it's nice cardstock. I really gotta say Jesse, this is amazing cardstock. It's thick. It's matte without I mean Get a little shine when the light hits it, but it's not glossy. Definitely matte. And here we have the fool. It's like adventuring. The magician. Ooh, maybe we should have the book candy so we can look up what the stones are. Here we go. Uh -huh. 
mukaite. Oops. So I actually have a mukaite here. So, I love mukaite. It's gorgeous. And this is just very fitting. You get so you have twigs for wands, a coin for coins, this little blue crystal for cups, and a quartz point for swords. Definitely have a lot of the little details too. Like, I don't know if you can see the charm on the head there. Here we have the High Priestess. I love how Jesse used um, Scrabble uh, tiles for the B and the J. <laughs> and let's see. Oops, upside down. That's not helpful now, is it? <laughs> oh, went a little too far here. Okay, High Priestess. Um, Azumar. Hmm. Uh, yeah, not Amazonite, basically. The what are the other crystals that are with it there? Um, yeah, it doesn't say what the pillars mean. This obviously a quartz chunk. This looks almost like onyx or obsidian. I mean. Okay, here we have the Empress, almost looks like honeycomb on her head, and some rose quartz there, I love that little detail. Green Serpentine, which is also on the Fool card, and the Queen of Pentacles. Pink mangano calcite heart on the left, topped by a pink rose quartz skull. Oh, I see a little teeny tiny skull right there, just like my little teeny tiny rose quartz. <laughs> and then, does it say what's on the head? Rose quartz pointed pillar, right? Ah, here we go. We see a crown of double terminated quartz crystal. Hmm. That's the Empress. Here we have the Emperor. It's a little hard to see that word, but. I think I'll know what that is just for the colors. And here we have clear quartz with a double terminated quartz. And then we have the Hierophant. Gorgeous. Another quartz. That's a gorgeous quartz, actually. I can see the reflection of the window, in it, which kind of actually adds to the image. Um, let's see. Clear quartz, and then the disciples are... Hmm. 
Just scanning. I'm not seeing a write-up for the disciples. Oh, okay. The miniatures are the same stone as the high priestess of Serpentine. Okay. The lovers. I love that the angel is a rose quartz skull there. That's gorgeous. Uh, two skulls are both white. Milky quartz on the left, white jade on the right. Okay. Chariot. We have quartz with that looks like a lava rock. Let's see. The black is cooled lava or fire. The white skull is. Tridaka Gygas, which is also called Giant Clam Shell. Oh, so it shell in lava. Oh, that's cool. I love that, actually. And then the large quartz. And as it's... Uh, okay, it's sitting on a dark labradorite stone. Very cool. These are some great images, and I can't wait to dive a little deeper into what Rachel has to say here. So strength, I love that you have, instead of a lion, you get a unicorn. Looks like it's kissing. Okay, let's see. Skull is white jade. And the unicorn. Oh. Oh, right. The high priestess wasn't Serpentine. It's that not Amazonite. And that's the same stone as the high priestess, the unicorn. And here we have strength. You know, the animal side and the human side of ourselves. Kissing, basically, right? Have the hermit, which is a labradorite skull. And you have a twig for the staff. Is that a Herkimer for the lantern? No, it's a double terminated uh, quartz. Hmm. I love how they talk also about a little bit about the crystals and stuff like. Um, for the lantern, Jesse used a double terminated point at each end quartz crystal. Such stones grow from the center out, just like the hermit, to quote Jesse. So that's cool. Very, very cool. I'm really digging this deck. It's, it's unique, and yet I think it'll be pretty easy to read with. Oh, wow. There's a lot of skulls in this image of the Wheel of Fortune. See, this lettering is really easy to see. That's the only gripe I have so far, is that sometimes the lettering is too close to what the background is. So, uh, let's see, Moss Agate, Ocean Jasper, Adventuring. Is that the center ones? So, okay. Um, rose court skull in the center. Um, and then we have eight small blue stones, or the not Amazonite. 
And then these uniform stones go away to eight green skulls that are like the spokes of a wheel. They include nephrite, moss agate, ocean jasper, and venturine. The four small stones in the corners of the card recall the four winged beings in the corners of the rider weight and the rider wheel card. Beginning upper right and moving clockwise, they are honey calcite for the eagle, yellow jasper for the lion, uh, coral fossil for the bull, and Chinese painting stone for the man or the angel. That's pretty cool. That's a cool touch. Oh, wow. That card, when I saw it at an angle, it's got this 3D vibe to it. Like, I could almost reach in and touch the crystals. That's crazy. The, the images are very crisp, for sure. Yeah, when it's just at the right angle, it, it totally looks 3D. Like, I could reach in and... I don't know if the camera's even picking that up, but to my eye, it's like, looks like a 3D image. It's crazy. <laughs> so here we have Justice. The skull is African turquoise. Um, they go into what African turquoise is. And then we got Pillars of Quartz. And then double terminated quartz in the middle there. So there's definitely like this. Oh, it's like a 3D quality. And you have to have it just at the right angle. And it's like you could just reach in and grab the crystals. That's ah, crazy. Very cool. I don't even know if the camera can pick that up. It's just. I don't know. I find it. I mean. The, yeah, the way it's just, you just get the right angle. Here we have the Hanged Man. We have a quartz crystal, of course. Oh, it's the same quartz crystal seen in the chariot. Interesting. I, I love that the write-ups have all these little details, too. These guys are really enjoying the show. <laughs> like I said, I wasn't planning on bringing all of them out, but they insisted. They are like, where? <laughs> they were all like, I don't want to be left out. If they're going, I'm going. <laughs> oh, God, they can be so talkative sometimes. Okay. Excuse me, God, it's been a long day. Um, here we have death. I just couldn't wait to unbox. Like I literally just got this out of the <laughs> out of the mailbox. So I'm like, I have to do a video now. I almost went on live, but I figured no one would show up if I did that. <laughs> so here with death we have brown jasper and then three black tourmalines. That's a great image. These are all just, they just work with each other really well. And then here we have Temperance. Looks like that white jade again, let's see. Oh no. It's the giant clamshell skull. That's very fitting too, doesn't it? So here, uh, the clear crystal point set up between the gem silica cups uh, acts as water. So the typical water pouring between cups, we have the gem silica chips, which are the cups in, this, in the cup suit, and then you have the chunk of quartz uh, as the water pouring between and yellow yarn wings there. So 
Ooh, the devil. So, it looks like the Mookite from, yep, it's the same Mookite Jasper from the Magician. And then the two skulls are the shell and Chinese painting stone. Oh, this is a great tower. Oh, where'd you ever find that crystal? That's perfect. It even looks like the tower breaking apart. That's cool. So. Let's see. Oh, it's a little interesting. Sorry, I got sucked into this little story about um, a reading having a tower show up as the last card two times in a row. So, um, here the tower is formed from large quartz points. And uh, the figures falling from the tower are two small uh, smoky quartz. Skulls. One facing down, one facing up, but still falling together. Um, then we have the star. That is a gorgeous star card, I must say. I always look for the star. Um, let's see. The skull was carved from a mineral known as Chinese painting stone, which is white jasper with flecks of indigo. That's really pretty. <laughs> oh, just a moment. Sorry about that. I had to deal with child and then the dog wanted to go out. Put him back! Of course, for you, nothing. It's been like a split second. For me, it was several minutes. So, <laughs> the joys of filming. Okay, here we have the moon, which is the moon ultra card that we got. Um, this beautifully staged card was the actual origin of the crystal skull tarot. Interesting. Okay. So this image right here is what started the whole deck. No wonder we got the larger version of it here. Let's see if I can pick it up with right there. So yeah, so that's why we got the larger version of it. So this image was the first one and it's what caused the whole deck to be made. So, thank you, Moon Card, for creating the initiative. So, we have a large crystal ball in the center, which represents the moon, and then we have the uh, uh, quartz points coming out like the rays of the moon. Let's see. Around the crystal ball moon, we see clear crystal points like spokes of a wheel. The rim of the wheel is a ring of 16 skulls in the stone that Jesse calls not Amazonite. Um, outside the wheel, a white jade skull looks down like the serene face in the Rider Moon card. On two quart skulls, dark and smoky on left and a milky quartz skull on the right, nearly transparent, making it a bit hard to see. So 
the back. They represent wolf and dog from the traditional image. And then at the bottom, a non-Amazonite turtle slowly makes its way towards the white jade. So there's the little turtle. Very cool. And then, let's see, sun, here we go. The sun card. I love the, the sphere that represents the sun and the skull are made from the same stone. Amber, okay. That's pretty amazing. Uh, so these are... Huh. Reconstituted amber, I think it says. Interesting. But you definitely get the sun energy from the, the colors and just... The sphere and skull being the same, reflecting the same reflection. That 3D image thing is crazy because it's not even 3D. <laughs> so here we have Judgment. Skimming. Okay. So the large white skull at the top is the giant clamshell skull, same as in Temperance. Below, three quart skulls rise up from the great wool as if from the land of the dead. Three smaller and more transparent skulls, hard to see against the white background, appear between the gray sea and the blue sky. The angel skull appears above clouds as the golden wings like light radiating from either side. Oh, I see. You can just see those other skulls there. They do kind of fade into the background up here. Not looking directly at them. Then we have the world. So this is the same skull that was used in the High Priestess. And then that non-Amazonite. Uh, let's see. Four skulls of uh, the four beasts. Uh, let's see, clockwise beginning upper left. We have agate, yellow jasper, red snowflake obsidian, and Chinese painting stone. So those, are those four there. Very evocative images. I mean, you definitely can see, like, there's the two twigs next to the skull that the, uh, in the world card, the figure is holding. And then we get into the miners, which, if I keep reading what everything is, is going to take forever. <laughs> but uh, wands, they used, uh, or Jesse used twigs. For the wands. So here we have the ace of wands with that bit of red wool to symbolize the fire, right? And here we have the two. And then let's see, it looks like there's a, yeah, it's a ruby skull with the non Amazonite sphere and the two twigs for the staves. I don't even have to look this one up. I can tell what it is just by looking at it. 
That is Tiger's Eye, I believe. I'll double check just to be positive. Yep, Tiger's Eye. That's the Three of Wands. My Tiger's Eye is right here. So, as you can see, it's very obvious when it's Tiger's Eye. Here we have the Four of Wands. Looks like the same sphere that was the Sun. Um, let's see. The green skull is Chrysophase, and the left one is. I mean, sorry, the right one is Pink Opal. Here we have the Five of Wands. So you have, let's see, the skulls are Amazonite, Ruby, Chrysophase, Pink Opal, and Blue Topaz. Very pretty. Hmm. The Six of Wands. We have the figure riding the horse, but in this case it's the unicorn made out of the non-Amazonite. Let's see. Ah, it's a ruby skull riding it. And then we have an actual Amazonite. Let's see the difference in color here and rose quartz. Seven of Wands. Uh, Chrysophase. Am I even saying that right? Chrysoprase. Here we have the Eight of Wands, which is just eight wands flying through the sky. No skulls involved just like the regular. Um, here we have the nine of wands. And that is red snowflake obsidian. Ooh, I've never seen red snowflake obsidian. That's cool. Then Ten of Wands is a dark, smoky quartz with a bundle of twigs on the back of his head. <laughs> Page of Wands. Oh, the, I have to jump over to the quartz section, but... So that's obviously um, fossilized coral, I can tell. So page of wands, you get the red yarn to represent the fire. Here we have the knight of wands, which is tiger's eye and... Is that mukai maybe? I'll have to look it up when we get to the quartz. Um, Queen of Wands, you got that gorgeous sun sphere again. And she also looks like Tiger's Eye. I think it's the same Tiger's Eye for the Knight, the Queen, and the King. Maybe it's different Tiger's Eyes, but they're all Tiger's Eye. Now I'm curious to look, just real quick, just real quick, quick. Um, I know this is probably already way too long, but I, oh, and then they have a stone glossary in the back that has like full on write up. Cool. Okay. 
Good to know. Uh, let's see. Wands. Uh, yellow coral fossil for the page. Um, oh, the unicorn is Azumar or Moganite. It's the not Amazonite that Jesse, as Jesse calls it. The knight is Tiger Eye. Yeah, it's the same skull for the knight, the queen, and the king. Same skull for all three figures. Now we're going into the cups. Very blue here. The 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 cups are um, gem silica beads or cabochons. Okay. So they're pieced together gem silica beads. So it's actually two pieces made into one. Here we have the two of cups, which is let's see, pink, opal, and blue topaz. Okay. Three of Cups. We have Tiger's Eye in the middle, uh, Brown Jasper on the left, and Yellow Jasper on the right. I love the way that looks because it's like the center is the with that Tiger's Eye looks like a blend of the other two. Great image. Four of Cups. I see now how those cups are formed from cabochons and beads. And then I love how the fourth cup is being offered, oops, being offered on a chunk of quartz there. And the skull, let me just double check. Yeah, okay, it's that fluorite. Do I have fluorite? No, I have labradorite. I don't think I have a fluorite skull. Oh, what am I talking about? <laughs> this big boy is the fluorite. Then we have five of cups. And that is dark smoky quartz. Six of Cups. I love how she used little stones to be the flowers. Um, so it's a rose quartz and a blue topaz. And it's agates for flowers. Okay. Here we have the seven. Very interesting. She was able to still get like seven different things to be there. And uh, again, it's a smoky quartz for the, the main skull. Are there any of those little one skulls? No. Eight of Cups, leaving the cups behind, crossing the waters to go on. Um, oh, 
That's insane. I'm looking, but it doesn't say what uh, stone that skull is. I think that looks like the ruby skull again, if I were just hazard a guess. Nine of Cups. Here, uh, that <laughs> that skull definitely has a big old smile, and it's the coral fossil skull. Ten of Cups. We get a rainbow of wool with the Ten Cups and. Father and mother are blue topaz and pink opal, and the children are a light blue Amazonite sun and nearly transparent rose quartz daughter. Very cool. I love the. I really, I really dig in this deck. I wasn't sure just because you know, this is actually the first deck I have that's a photograph deck. So here we have Page of Cups which looks like is that blue topaz just jumping back to the here we go. yeah blue topaz so here we have the night this looks like that not Amazonite. And she, Jesse says that the knight, queen, and king are all the same stone. Here is the queen. Let's see what the, the throne is lapis lazuli. It's so in shadow you can barely see it. And then the king is the that same not Amazonite. Oh this actually does look like different okay. That they're three of the same type of skull. I get it. Okay. I thought she meant it was the three the three were the same skull, but obviously they have different markings. And now we get into swords. So swords are going to be uh, quartz crystal points to represent the swords. As you can tell here by the ace of swords. Two of Swords. Oh. So here we have Two of Swords with uh, Yeah, not Amazonite. The thing that I find interesting is that if you look really closely, it looks like there's a, a Druzy in the skull, which is kind of fitting for the Two of Swords, huh? Trying to figure things out, feeling like you have a hole in the head. <laughs> this is really gorgeous cardstock, I must say. Here we have the. Oh, that's a great image. That's a great Three of Swords. I mean, Three of Swords is not something you want to come up regularly, but this one's really nice. So, the image of a heart is formed from a group of heart shaped labradorite stones arranged in a heart around a cooled black lava skull. Oh, there is a skull in there. Oh, I see it now. It disappeared among the hearts. And then the um, points, obviously, is the swords. Here we have four of swords. Got the three hanging on the wall, and then the fourth underneath. That looks like smoky quartz. 
but more of a clear, yeah, slight smoky quartz. Here we have five of swords. We have blue coral fossil is the main one. And then the um, defeated ones are a, that's the blue coral. And then you have a light smoky quartz and a tiger's eye. That's the defeated skulls. And he's got, he's picking up all the crystal points. He, it's kind of hard to see if you're not looking directly at them. Such a cool, unique deck. I really, I really appreciate how unique it is. And yet, because I might, as you can tell, I love me some crystal skulls. And truthfully, I started collecting crystal skulls because I had backed this deck. And I mean, I've had a fascination of crystal skulls for probably 20 or 30 years, but I just never got around to getting myself any. And then this, I pledged on this and then the last seven, eight months have been slowly collecting crystal skulls. You can get some crazy deals on Etsy. <laughs> uh, six of swords here we have. So that is a nephrite, the stone that's the boat. And then the large one is a rose quartz. And then there's two chrysoprase children. And then of course there's the six points above them. This is a gorgeous card, I really must say. This really evokes that moving on, going someplace new. Seven of Swords. I know I said I was going to be a little quicker, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm just diving deep. I hope you don't mind. So that's a moss agate skull. The trickster. The Eight of Swords. That looks like the same crystal skull that was used for the magician. Let's see if it says that. Yeah, it's the it's the Mukai Jasper that was the magician and the devil. Interesting. I love how certain skulls keep showing up. And then we have the nine. Um, oh, that's a ocean jasper skull. I love how ocean jasper is just so different and unique. And then you have the nine swords, and then way at the top there is a labradorite heart. But yeah, Chris, um, Ocean Jasper comes in so many different shapes and looks. This is my Ocean Jasper skull right here. Here we have the Ten of Swords. Wow, that's powerful image right there. So, let's see, black and white zebra jasper, and um, smoky quartz table is what that is. Uh, it definitely evokes that feeling of the Ten of Swords. And then let me flip back to the we're almost done, and then we'll have to flip again. Uh, so, Page of Swords 
is a milky quartz. The night is a clear quartz. The not Amazonite unicorn. I think that unicorns on most of the night cards. I love the subtle little details like the gray wool as clouds and like the red wool is kind of like the hair flying back or the banner flying back. Oh, this one we have different stones for the quartz instead of them all being the same. Here is the Queen of Swords, and she is sitting on the same nephrite uh, stone that was in the six. Um, she is a blue coral fossil. Okay. And then the King of Swords. I'm not sure what that is. Let me see. Oh, it's actually a man made material called terahertz. Hmm. Interesting. So that skull is made from a man made um, substance that's used in semiconductors. It conducts heat and can melt ice. Wow, that's that's very interesting. Um, I think all we have left is the pentacles now. So in the pentacles, um, she used oh, what was it? It was coins, but it's oh the Morgan silver dollar. So it's actually pure silver. Here we have the Ace of Pentacles, 1878, wow, old. Here is the two, still have that um, infinity symbol. Yellow Jasper. Are those the same coins? I don't think so. Here we have the three of pentacles. And we got African turquoise, ocean jasper, and venturine working together. Four. is Green Adventuring. Oh, my battery is low. I'm going to have to speed up a little. Not, <laughs> not that I haven't been saying I need to speed up for a while now. <laughs> so the skull on the left is Moss Agate, and on the one on the right is Gray Quartz. It's the Five of Pentacles. Oh, I see, Represent, representing the two walking in the snow. Here we have the Six of Pentacles. Um, Cryoface on the left and Amazonite on the right. They're really nice, thick cards, I gotta say. I love that. We have the Seven of Pentacles with a, an African turquoise. I wanted to get one of those. 
here we have the eight of pentacles I see a printing line to the middle of that oh well. I don't know if you, I don't even know if it's picking it up but there's like a line right through the skull this one is green ventrine this one obviously rose quartz nine of pentacles the ten of pentacles we have uh, let's see the blue not amazonite skull is masculine the rose quartz is feminine the white jade between them a child possibly and then you have the not amazonite um, unicorns and then we have our quartz the last of the quartz here, page of pentacles. So for the quartz, we used that big silver dollar again. Um, let's see. Green adventuring. The knight is on that not Amazonite unicorn, and the uh, skull is green fluorite. I love my fluorite. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles is. Oh. This is the same skull that was the Fool and the Empress. Serpentine, green serpentine. Interesting that certain skulls show up as different characters. Kind of cool, actually. And then our final card here, King of Pentacles, is Coffee Jasper. I don't think I've ever heard of Coffee Jasper. I look forward to uh, really diving deep in this book. It's got a lot to it, for sure. In fact, um, before my battery dies on my, my phone, on my phone, my camera here, my phone, no. The phone is right here. I'm using a camcorder for this, um, which I actually got like seven years ago, so I'm surprised it's still <laughs> functional. Um, I want to see how well this deck shuffles, and I think it'd be great for us to pull a card. Oh, that's a great shuffle. That's a great shuffle for sure. It's very easy to shuffle. I don't feel like I'm going to break anything by shuffling. And it stays, it's a nice chunky deck too, so no need to worry about rifle shuffling with this guy, that's for sure. A couple more. I'll do some overhand just to see how that feels, and then we'll draw a card for all of us. smushing it together well enough. Let's try that one more time. Oh yeah, easy peasy. Okay, a little overhand here. Yeah. over. 
out. And the backs obviously are reversible, so it's easy to do reversibles if you do reversibles. And we got the Eight of Pentacles. Very fitting. Here, let me see if that will fit right there. Perfect. I guess that doesn't really work right there, does it? Here, I know what I'll do. Put the box right here so I can prop that up for you guys to see it. Eight of Pentacles. This picture is a great example of Jesse's ability to recreate the scenes on the writer cards. There, young man sits on a bench making pentacles. We see him focused on his current effort. Six finished ones line up on a post in front of him, while an eighth lies at his feet, ready for the finishing touches. The image evokes hard work, someone cheerfully absorbed, absorbed in his craft. Now, of course, Jesse's image is limited by having no hands to work on the coins, no body to sit on a bench, and yet the green adventuring skull seems entirely focused on the coin in front of it. As while the rider, six line up in an orderly column. There, maybe I'll just hold it up so you can see it better. There we go. While the eighth lies behind. I suspect Jesse really enjoyed staging this particular scene. Making coin jewelry has been her profession for years. Readings. Work, dedication, a love of what you are doing. Such love often seems to create its own luck, own skill. Reversed. Impatience, a desire to get quick results rather than develop the skills and put in the work to do something properly. So great how each one has a, a beautiful write-up by uh, Rachel Pollock and like describing the whole setup and everything and then also going into the key details there. Um, so this has been a pleasure to unbox this. I, I think this is going to be one of my favorite decks. Oh, and of course, look what's at the bottom of the deck is the moon. So very fitting. Um, and thank you, Jesse, for creating such a, a beautiful deck. And thank you, Rachel, for writing a great book I'm looking forward to diving deeper into. So, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you order this. Um, and I will, if I remember, I might not remember, but if I remember, I will try to um, put in a link for the Etsy shop, which, you know, if you just <clears throat> Google Crystal Skull Tarot, it should pop up pretty quickly. A little part to you. Let me get a little water. So, um, again, this has been amazing. Um, I'm sure my little Skull family is happy to welcome these guys into our home and in fact I think after I am done here I might make a little crystal grid around the deck that sounds sounds appropriate make it I mean a crystal skull grid around the deck and um, let my guys charge up this deck so it's even more potent um, so yeah uh, yeah let me know if you have it or you're planning on getting it I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments Please don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, hit that bell button so you can see more of these. And uh, don't forget that Tuesday morning, well, my early morning for me, um, I am now doing live tarot readings. So if you'd like a reading from me for free, that's the place to be. And if you are interested in a paid reading, please join us on Facebook at Jonathan's Tarot page. And um, I can forward you a um, PayPal, Venmo, or Square link to pay for a in-depth reading. I do it by the minute, and I also do uh, specialize in past life readings as well as past life regressions. So. 
Let me know if any of those things interest you. And until next time, aloha.